Give them what they want. Yeah. Give them what they want. That's the seductive power of the golden calf. It's easy. It's tempting. I get it. It works. And it's, oh, so seductive. Just give them what they want. It's important for us to understand that that seductive power of the golden calf still impacts us as the people of God today and not just in the time of Moses. What do I mean by that? What would be an example of that? I think that the greatest challenge before the church today is this. Trying to hear the voice of God in terms of what are we to do and be in this world of change. The landscape has changed, and you know that. Now, we like to blame COVID, and certainly COVID has been a major player. But if we're honest, you and I as people of God have been wrestling with this issue for some time, and and it predates COVID. COVID just sped up the process. So here we are. We find ourselves like the people of God at the foot of Mount Sinai waiting to hear God speak, the voice to come down from Sinai. And like the people of God of old, we're impatient. Yes, we have our hands folded in prayer for discernment, but there's a part of us checking the clock. We are also anxious, just like the people of God of old. Anxious because of this. What if God speaks? What if God speaks? What if we hear the voice from Sinai? (laughs) What does that mean for us? And so we're impatient and we're anxious just like the people of God long ago. And this is where Aaron was brilliant. Misguided, but brilliant. He understood that and saw that in the people of God and said, you know what? I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you want. You understand idols. You want an idol, so here you go a golden calf and we'll make it to the glory of Yahweh who set us free. I get it. Works. And he really thought that Moses would be happy. He thought that God would be happy. Of course, he was wrong. (laughs) He missed the boat. But that dynamic, that dynamic is still being played out with us as God's people. Back to our discerning. What would God have us do and be in this new world? And I'm just going to take a sliver of that. Worship. What does worship mean in this new world? We've been trying to figure that out. And so, most congregations have come up with this idea, this solution. You know, What if we do what we always do on a Sunday, even though experience says it's not been as effective, but let's do what we have always done on a Sunday morning because we know it, we like it. It's what we want, and we'll live stream it. There you go. So many congregations have done that. And I, for one, I'm, I am thrilled and excited that we have a platform to the whole world. Imagine that. Anywhere in the world, they could watch that service. Here's the concern. How many are watching? 
Most congregations, when they look at that little number in the corner that tells them how many people tuned in, it's pretty disappointing. And of those few who are watching, how many are staying for the whole service? As a pastor, I hope they get to the sermon. No guarantee. But more importantly, how are people impacted by it? How are hearts and lives change it? How does it serve the gospel of Jesus Christ? What difference does it make? We just don't know. And so you're left with the question, is the voice of God the voice from Sinai? Or maybe, just maybe, it's a golden calf. The good news, the truth is, God is still speaking. There's still the voice of Sinai. And when and where you and I hear it, when we listen, when we respond, God does amazing things. One Sunday after worship, one of the members of the congregation I serve came up to me and said, Pastor, Pastor, uh, we need to provide medication for every person that needs it. Underinsured, uninsured, undocumented, and we need to do that all across the country. As you can imagine, I was a little surprised. Kind of a daunting task. And as he was talking, I have to own, I have to make confession, there was a little voice of Aaron inside of me. And that little voice of Aaron was saying, give him a golden calf, give him a golden calf. It would look like this. I would say to him, great idea. Love it. I love the idea. But uh, what if we did it this way? Why do, if we put together health kits and distribute them to the food pantries around Hunterton County? It meets your concern about health, but uh, it's much more doable and manageable. We know how to do that. I'm sure I could sell it to the council. And, and we could launch it in the fall, and we could get the kids involved. Oh, there was that voice of Aaron. But I'm looking at this man, and he's so passionate. He's so committed, and he shares with me that when he was a little boy, someone had helped out to give his mother medication, and she could not afford it at that time. And it always made an impact on him. And he always wanted to make a difference. And as he spoke about that, I'm thinking, what if this is the voice of God? What if this is the voice from Sinai? So I said, okay, so what do we do? And on that day, Hunterdon County Medication Access Partnership, HC map was launched. We had to do a little heavy lifting in the beginning because we had to find partners. You know, we went to the hospital and they went, no. <laughs> we already do enough charity care. We went to the local politicians. They went, no. There's no room in the budget for this. And that whole business of undocumented people, that's a political minefield. Who wants to go there? We went to faith communities who said, oh, yes, but... <laughs> but we're not sure how much money we could give to it and not sure how many volunteers we could provide. And then we went to Big Pharma. And to our surprise and delight, they went, yes, yes, we'll provide the medication as long as you can do compliance. So we took that information and developed the program. You know, we had a little bit of money. Uh, found a place that was safe for people to come, got the word out. We, we got a RN administrator who could register people and evaluate them and then help them with the paperwork. There's always paperwork to be done. And then kind of watch over what took place. 
some built-in accountability, compliance. You know what we discovered? That when people get the medication they need, they don't get sick. And so they don't get sick, they don't wind up going to the ER, where most poor people go because it's the only place you go and they can't say no to you. And ERs are the most expensive way to get medical care in America today. Now we took that data back to the political folk, to the hospital, and we could say to them, guess what? For a little upfront cause, two things happened. One, most importantly, people get the care they need. And second of all, you save. You save not just hundreds of dollars, you save thousands of dollars. All of a sudden, the hospital's in, local politicians are in. In fact, the hospital took over the program and it has been incredibly successful. More than I could ever have imagined. Now I've retired and I've moved from the area, but last report when I heard, you know, knew about it, they had provided over $20 million with a, uh, worth of medication to people in Hunterdon County in need including undocumented people. And this program has become a model for other communities, wait for it, across the country. Wow. I am unbelievably grateful. I'm also unbelievably humble. Humble because I almost settled for a golden calf. People of God, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God is still speaking. There's still that voice from Sinai. And when and where you and I hear it, when we listen, when we respond, God does amazing things. Don't settle for a golden calf. Amen.